Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. Today I'm going to be doing a watercolour and I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I am a wildlife and a landscape artist but one of the things I do love doing now and again are domestic farm animals or domestic stock and one of those is the Highland cattle. It's a real big favourite of mine so let's, if I can bring this up fantastic, let's dive straight in and see what happens. Okay so the drawing is going to take me a little while and I have speeded it up because uh, I'm sure that you don't need to see every little bit but I have condensed this down and it did take me quite a while for this Highland cow. A lot of measuring, a lot of looking and checking the muscle groups, the legs, the um, head in particular was extremely hard and I had to balance the whole thing on this fairly small piece of paper. I'm actually drawing in my normal uh, 2B or 4B uh, pencil. I'm not quite sure. I still need to look up what that lead is. Uh, anyway, um, I just wanted to take my time and get it about the right size on this. I suppose it's a 1 8 imperial uh, size of paper with a 1 inch border, which I've already taped down, which most of you who watch my videos very regularly will uh, be aware of that I like that nice one inch tape border around each of my watercolour paintings. The horns took a specific amount of goes and I had to be very careful by erasing all the time and with a lead that may have been too hard. This one wasn't but if you did use a hard lead then of course you do run the risk of damaging the surface of the paper and the more times you erase that then the more chances you'll have of damaging the paper moving forward. Once damaged that's it it's done but you can see I'm progressing I'm looking I'm reshaping I'm checking measuring checking reshaping doing all of these different things as I move forward and none of it stops I am constantly taking the bits out putting back bits that I feel that should be reshaped and looked up in a bit more detail before I move on and finally get to the Bisham position where I feel that uh, I can start the painting part of this. It was never going to be an easy drawing and this sort of thing really or rarely ever is and you just make it look right at the end of the day. The mouth took a little bit of time, the positioning of the eyes and the eye sockets and they are you don't see much of their eyes anyway. These are big hairy rugs of uh, a creature and huge m lots of hair all over the body, especially up over the top of the head. One more time you can see I'm drawing in and redrawing the horn. I was never quite happy with that as it was. It was one minute too low, too long, too high. I finally got there I think and I feel that we are pretty much ready to start the whole of the painting of this in watercolour. Just one or two extra little bits of working negative space on that light hair on top of the head. So now I'm ready for the painting. The brush is in hand. I put my first wash in and it is using a lot of uh, umbers and raw sienna uh, mixes and I've come down with a little bit of um, what I would say sort of greens and uh, uh, a little bit of cobalt in there just to give that lovely mix but as it starts to dry back then I start to look at lightening areas up and watching it as it as it goes. I then put a little bit of violet. I love the transition between the distance of that uh, ultramarine violet color that I started putting in whilst the paper at the back was a little bit dry uh, sorry not dry was still a bit damp in the paper um, I allowed that uh, moisture to bleed in with those colours and I dropped a little bit of translucent orange and a little bit of the thalocyanin green just to mix it up a little bit in the, bit of the dark or in that sort of distant area and I come down a little bit around the animal as well with a bit more transparent orange. Now all of that was left pretty much as was. I didn't need to do too much. I merely wanted to suggest the sort of, um, I don't know, woody, um, sort of moorland type looks with scrub. 
that would be in the background, especially if these were in Scottish glens, it would be very much like this. And although this area is nowhere near Scotland, it's actually not far from my home uh, in a place called Hothfield. And I actually have done demonstrations in watercolor and in oil from this very location in the past, but not uh, so far on the Highland cattle. I just think they're a wonderful creature, big, uh, I don't know how gentle chance they might be. I've never tried to upset one, nor would I want to try and start. But these are cows, and they look just as fearsome as some of the heavyweight bulls that you see. Now I'm putting some of the very same colors in the middle ground, making a bit more suggestion. The paint had pretty much dried in the background, and by doing so, I was then allowing some of it to stay sharp and more... Um, how should I say, indicative of some growth or something in that middle ground against the lighter areas. Other areas I let it to fuse the green into the reds and a little bit of my lovely Indian or Venetian red, whichever I use uh, in the foreground, coupled up with some uh, other colors um, of greens and a bit more of the raw sienna going in. So that really sets up the foreground colors vastly different to the background ones so you do get that uh, perspective working and i felt that uh, i had to dry it all through now so that i could actually start work on the uh, animal itself and so i did really keep all the paper nice and dry i wanted nothing to bleed and i wanted to have uh, all of the animal sort of rendered and done before I set to making any further details in the foreground or indeed the background of the painting. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually layering up the ear and around the face, the cheek with predominantly um, mixes of uh, raw sienna, a bit of transparent orange going in and on occasions a little bit of that ultramarine cobalt, uh, not cobalt, the ultramarine violet, which is really a stunning color and mixes well with the um, raw sienna to give you some wonderful gray pigments and uh, sort of you can mix that one way and the other warm and cool very much as you can mix together uh, some uh, ultramarine blue mixes with some or what shall we say uh, burnt siennas same sort of thing you get a rich warms and rich darks now I'm tapping in some negative spaces in and around the head, trying to suggest more where the um, lumps of hair that are hanging over the forehead and down over the face. So I'm working basically negative space. I'm looking at where I need to leave areas that are going to look and catch the light further on into the painting. So I'm trying to paint what you would see between the hairs, i.e. the negative space. At the same time, I'm putting in some more of these mixes of the violet and the oranges and indeed the burnt, uh, raw siennas just to deepen down the, the lower parts of the body of the animal and also the shoulders, the flanks and deeper areas. Now, one thing I will say is that on this area, all the way around the bottom, I again use the principle of painting negative space. By that, I mean that you don't see my brush go all the way down and give a hard line around the base of the animal. I've actually eaten into some of the uh, surrounding vegetation to suggest that there are lighter grasses that appear in front of and up into the cow itself so you can't paint those on unless you use body color later instead of that the better thing to do if you can is to leave the lighter color or the whiter paper to do the job for you and the only way you can do that is to literally paint negative space using your darker colors to leave areas unpainted and therefore suggestive of uh, grasses growing which is what i did and i actually will reinforce that further on down into this painting but uh, you can see I'm doing and each time I do another layer you can see how those little grassy tufts seem to be growing out of nowhere against the body of this animal and it actually 
defines it in much of in, in as much as it settles it on the ground now i'm starting to look at the horns and they are quite cool but they're also warm at the same time i'm using various uh, mixes of that violet and the warmer yellows of raw sienna just to vary the the contrast in those horns dark at the top obviously getting lighter and that reflected light under that one that comes towards us uh, that i'm painting now all the time i'm looking to address various parts of this i'm doing the mouth parts the nostrils and area around there that need just a little bit of work bringing a bit more detail around and the surrounding areas too darkening up under the chin and the throat area as well as down into the sort of area up to the knees the legs and around the chest all of those are gaining a little bit more darker layer as i go through each time i'm trying to look taps of color in to suggest the darker shadows of some of the heavy matted hair that these cows actually carry you can see that i've gone over the horns yet again i'm softening with a damp brush so i get no hard edges that is really essential i don't want those hard edges i want those subtle changes in the horn to be soft uh, and therefore appear as a round horn that's the whole idea but now i'm starting to look at parts of the body and again putting another layer in to suggest the darker hairs or the sort of i don't know the depth of the hair the shadows that are within the deeper parts of the hair on the top a little bit lighter of course around the ear defining that horn edge a little bit more by making the ear darker all very good tricks and tips and at the same time i'm coming down with slightly lesser color on the flanks and the shoulders of the animal and now I'm just going over the whole of it, refer, looking at the sort of area of that hair. Uh, again, the negative spaces, uh, just to suggest the hair is a little bit more defined on the top of the head. Around the body, a little bit area on the back of the flanks there, just darkening it off and getting set. Now the final bit, we're just going to be looking at the foreground and i'm just tapping in one a few darks and browns and cools just to suggest bits of debris bits of grass growth i don't know anything really that's a little bit more detailed than that of the background and suggest that it is foreground matter and it doesn't really say anything other than the fact that we can see there's something going on i did use counter uh, counter change here just to push that knee out on the animal by making the area behind him a little bit darker and with that all done let's just use the rigger to put one or two extra marks in the foreground just suggestive taps of color here to suggest a bit more vegetation and with that all done i really am happy with the way this painting's gone so i'm prepared now to sign it and get ready to move on i hope you've enjoyed it and let's get ready for taking all this tape off okay everybody we're sorted. Let's go for the big reveal because this is my favorite part of doing any painting is the taking off of this nice edge. Lots of people ask me why I do it because it's quite a strong loss of uh, paper but I just feel that it gives a beautiful framed edge to any work that you're doing. So I'm more than happy to um, use this method of putting down um, the uh, tape on this but make sure of course that you're using a low tack tape and the other thing to bear in mind is when you're doing it if you're painting over several days don't leave the tape on too long what will happen is it will tear the paper fibers it can do even in the short time that i've had it on so just be aware of that okay so there's the big reveal I'm really happy with the result and I'm sure you got something from it as well. So I don't know at this stage whether it's going to be a real time or a time lapse for YouTube uh, and whether or not if it's too long and the full time will just be on Patreon. But anyway, I'm sure whatever happens, you'll enjoy it and uh, I enjoy painting it for you. So with that said, if you're not a subscriber, please, please subscribe to the channel. It does take an awful lot of work to get these films done, edited, 
painted and edited and out there for you to enjoy and it's great to know that people are watching it and enjoying the channel so if you're not a subscriber hit the subscribe button and I haven't actually got a bell icon yet I keep hearing about those I've got to figure one of those out um, but if you also would be so kind as to like give it a thumbs up and also if you would like to um, share that would be fantastic as well and I really really appreciate that and if you've got any comments about this painting or indeed any other paintings of mine put them in the comment section below I'll always answer them I look forward to reading them and I look forward to interacting with you the viewers and that all said check out the patreon page guys because I'm adding to it all the time if you want a lot more content from me that's narrated blow by blow some of them tips and tricks and all that sort of stuff nip on over to the patreon page it costs you nothing to have a look it's five or ten dollars a month at best uh, and that way you get access to so much more and I'm adding to it monthly weekly as often as I can uh, I'm not actually putting any sort of constraints on that it's only going to be two a month or whatever I'm putting in as much effort as I can to build my patreon page for you to get value for your dollar and to stick with it and help me grow that uh, community too so that said thank you very much catch you all in the next video see you next Friday bye bye for now bye